parts project here, and I just wanted to show one of the ways that I'm personally using this trick, hack, scene, effects, punch-in thing that I've been showing in a few videos. I do. I have a setup video that I just put out last uh, before this one that shows how to actually like get this all set up so you can get rolling with it. So check that out if you really want to uh, start using this for yourself. But if you're just curious, like this one is just going to be showing sort of one of the ways I use it. And uh, for those that are just kind of discovering this for the first time, or maybe this is the first video you've watched, this is essentially what the uh, end result is once it's all set up. So we'll play the pattern. Notice that I press the different buttons, trig buttons, and um, it affects tracks, multiple tracks all at the same time, like a like an effect scene, kind of like the Octa track does. And um, that's done using an externally. It can only be done if I, you're sequencing it externally, and uh, you're using fill trigs, and then you lock. And there's this way of doing it so that you press one button and they all affect. But that's in the setup video. Basically, here's my application of it the, that I like, one of my favorites uh, that, I, that I'm using it for. And that's to use LFOs to give sort of like a repeating groove of something. I think the most dramatic way to illustrate this is with the pitch parameter. So with my uh, percussion sound on track six, the LFO is dictating the pitch and also the filter is opening and closing and it's dictating sort of like how loud the sounds each hit can be and the yeah so the pattern is uh, locked to one of the snap positions on the speed parameter you hold function and turn the speed parameter and lock to like 48 or 32 or 16 and so forth uh, basically I'll just say how the where the parameters are so I've got both the LFOs are on BPM multiplier 16. Uh, one of them's on sine, one of them's on triangle, that doesn't really matter, but they're both on hold. So LFO mode uh, hold. And then the speed is uh, on 48, snapped to 48. So if the speed knob gets nudged off of the snapped position, it'll go into like a um, an LFO pattern that doesn't really sound as obviously synced, right? It's not snapped so much to the... It's still on the BPM, but it's kind of like, you know, it's going wild and free. So if I snap it back to 48, it'll start... Be... You can... See what I mean? It's like back... It's back on the... Uh, on the... It's back on the program. So... But, but now, it's a different... Uh, pitch pattern. So every time you nudge it off and snap it back, it's going to be, it's going to give you a different groove. So the same thing's happening with the, with the filter, if you do that with the filter. But manually, it's annoying to do this, and you can't do it with, for both LFOs at the same time. But using the scene trick, if you hold down a button where part of the parameter locks for that trick were to, um, knock the speed off of the snapped position then when you hold silent and then you come back now we're in a different a different groove and you don't have to have that parameter making things silent i just find that it's effect it's kind of uh, it's really effective to kind of go into this like silent like whoa it's gone and now like the music comes back and then it is like a different groove happening. So here's what it sounds like with like all the tracks where the same principle that I just showed is being placed on the like the hi-hats and stuff like that. But for the hi-hats, it's more um, subtle. 
but you can still, I think, with all the sounds together, if it's happening to them all in some even a small or big way, it's uh, it's really noticeable when it comes back. So here it is with um, everything. Here we go. So you hear that, right? You get a feel for that, you get for that groove. There you go. So I like that a lot. That helps me a lot when, um, you know, maybe I uh, get a little lost when I'm performing live and kind of like, what do I do? I feel like I'm, I'm getting sort of stuck on the same thing. Uh, I want to you know, maybe shake things up a little bit and uh, and just like there, there's a new, it's just like a little bit of a different uh, feel. You know, it's the same vibe. I want to stay. I don't want to just change things too much, but I, I want to kind of like toss up the soil a bit and get things uh, get things fresh. Also, I guess I, I guess also at the same time we're kind of demonstrating this the the effectiveness of just having a scene that just kind of cuts out the sound because maybe I've got some other sounds going here like a like a like a synth or something on out outside that's separate from all this or something that's playing like a vocal sample and then just like cutting out all the sounds at the same time without having to hold mute buttons you know for everything. And it's just done with a button, so then I can just let it go, right? I'm just holding it, and then I don't have to, like, think about pressing it again to make everything come back in. All I have to do is just let go and throw my hands up, and then, boom, we're in this. It's back, and not only is it back, but if using this LFO thing, there's this slightly different feel to it. So it's not like we're just, oh, we're back at the same place we were. It's like we oh we took this little dramatic break, this suspense, and now we're we jumped back in, but things are slightly different, which is a very easy to accomplish when producing something in a DAW. You know, you just draw everything in perfectly, and then you you bounce your track and you just put on the wave file in a DJ set, and then it just does it. Yeah, anything that's going to help me get some of those effects doing a doing a live set using only machines is much welcomed because uh, there's sort of the ongoing quest to find solutions for in the. Uh, I guess in this in the gear world. So, I hope you enjoyed this video and that it helped you a little bit. Thanks for watching. See you later.